folks, welcome back to the Armchair Warriors podcast. It is late, sort of. I'm tired. <laughs> but we got a doozy again this week. Um, Luke, I'm going to pass it on over to you because you're the guy with all the insight here. So, so go ahead. Yeah, we got kind of a different structure this week. We're going to end up, we got to sit down. I got to sit down because Dylan and Jace were working. But I got to sit down with Jesse Woodchats. He's a WHL ref and he refs U Sport, refs AG, AJHL. Really cool to sit down with him and kind of get a ref's perspective. And that was a pretty long interview. He had a lot of great insight, kind of what it's like being on the ice and going from a guy that was pursuing a WHL dream to being able to ref those guys and still stay in the game after injuries caught up with them. But, I mean, he talks all about it in the interview. So we're going to kick it over to that. And then right after that, we'll talk about the playoffs a little bit for probably 10 minutes. And then we did a fun one this week. We were I was up in Fort St. John over May long weekend. So my little cousin, Sully, was... Uh, peewee provincial champion in bc oh, so man. me and dylan were together sully hopped on for 10 minutes and then my brother caleb hadland of the brandon wheat kings hopped on with us too we kind of just sat on the couch and kind of just hung out and talked for a little bit but with that we're gonna kick it over to that whl interview don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer so listen in hey guys we are back with jesse woodshats he is a whl ref he also refs U sport Junior A, he's a great ref. He's on the up and up, going up towards the big leagues. Jesse, glad to have you. Thanks, Luke. Pleasure. We'll hop right into it. I mean, officiating is such a thankless job. And so what kind of got you into it to just start doing that, even though they get ripped on in every ring? I love that question because I hated refs. Um, Yeah, you look at like my elite prospects, I'm pretty sure I have a pretty good number of pims. It wasn't like crazy, but a lot of them were tens. I was like, I wore a letter a lot of the years and the refs I remember having a good game with or felt like that I enjoyed, um, at least communicated. Um, so for me, like, that's kind of one thing that I love now to do is to communicate with players, but I just was, I hated when they didn't. And it was like, man, just be accountable. Like, you know, that was a bad call or, you know, that that should have been called. Um, the accountability drove me nuts when a guy would just like brush you off, like you don't matter and you're going to the box knowing you shouldn't have a penalty. Um, it, when the game was six, nothing, and you did that for the fourth time in a row to our team, (laughs) the lid would flip and I would just be like, just offside comments that, yeah, 10 K now you can go home. (laughs) Um, so I never, ever would have thought I'd be a ref. In fact, I probably, if you ask my family, it was like, yeah, you you hate refs. Um, but I genuinely tell people now, <clears throat> and I see players like in junior B, um, certain leagues like that, where yeah. I'm like, you'd be a really good ref. Cause you kind of remind me of me. Like you, you rub guys the wrong way. You were on the edge all the time. Um, you understand like the line and how intense the game is. Um, so I, I don't know. I got into it. I farm in the summertime. Um, so just, little rink rat man like i i stopped playing hockey because of concussions so like just injury after injury couldn't play at the high level um so when it came time i was healthy it was like how do i get back involved it was either coaching or refing and i chose refing yeah no that's awesome you, it's, you kind of said it how like you almost understand the line and you know like you know what people are going to say to you and kind of what's the worst they can bring at you after yeah almost doing that that yeah. it doesn't bother you as much once you get there totally but you kind of mentioned your playing career, and I looked at your elite prospects. I saw the 94 PIMS in the 30 games yeah. in whatever season that there was. I th- thought that was pretty pretty impressive and uncharacteristic because I knew you after your playing career. Eight, eight tens. There was eight tens. <laughs> probably. I'm not kidding. Seven minors and eight tens. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm probably exaggerating it a bit, but like that's probably close. And I bet you if we could get my coach to approve it, he'd be like, yeah. He'd probably Too fact many. check And it. I wore the C that year, so he's like... <laughs> Too many times did we have him sitting for 10. Yeah, just sitting out. But you, sorry, so while you were playing, you got drafted to Kootenai and played a couple games with them. Do you kind of want to talk about even just growing up, like playing hockey, kind of what that was like and at an elite level? Yeah. Um, first of all, Kootenai was awesome. Um, met some people there that I still like admire and look up to as, as people, um, but also just having them as friends is really cool. Um, but the playing leading up to it, I didn't think I was going to get drafted. Uh, I looked at WHL as like the NHL to me as a kid. 
Um, I grew up in Evanston playing and then moved out to Sherwood Park. Uh, the year I got drafted um, was kind of the year I started to think maybe I could go somewhere. Like scouts are calling you and you're starting to get these letters in the mail and you're getting attention and, and even peers at school. Um, so that was probably the year I started to think it was realistic. Um, and yeah, getting drafted was unbelievable and unreal experience. Um, but that was also the same period of time when I was struggling with injuries. So I had my first like major concussion, Bantam AAA and exhibition season, probably came back too soon from that, like didn't fully recover. And it was just like, I never, I never felt the same. Like I reflect on it and it was like that Bantam year, I had a good year, but it was like a downhill slope from there, like, like health wise. Um, at the time, like I think concussions were just starting to get some kind of awareness and like education on the importance of taking your time and recovering. And I think I was kind of in that like bridge of like before it kind of got yeah, before extremely it was, at the front of the league. Exactly. So I recall like you don't have a headache for five days and you're like feeling symptom free for five days. You're good. And to me, I don't remember being able to explain how I felt internally, like I feel like I'm going insane. Like, I feel like I'm getting mad and upset over stuff that doesn't upset me. Um, but I can't, at the time, I wasn't comfortable to talk to my friends. I wasn't comfortable to talk to my coaches. So, yeah, I got drafted. That was an amazing feeling. But, like, to the point where I finally hung him up, I was, like, dealing with injury after injury and trying to play at the highest level. And um, so in Kootenai, I played at 16, those four games. Um it was a grind, man. Like I, I just think about it. I'm like the, the expectations to be at that level and, and to play at that level are exceptionally high. And I knew that, and I felt like I could do it, but like my body was like, you're not, this isn't for you. Like, I, I don't know what it was, but I, I couldn't continue playing at 16. So I went home, um, tried to play junior a, tried to play midget triple A or whatever I ended up doing. It just kept getting concussions. So Kootenai, like, for me, was kind of the peak of my career, playing career, obviously. Um, but it taught me tons. Like, the humility I got from that. Like, lose your whole identif like, I identified as a hockey player. Yeah. Um, and you kind of just lose it. And you feel like you lose a lot of your friends because now they're all doing other stuff. They're moving on to, to different programs and different teams. And they're going pro and dealing with the, the fact that I wasn't doing all that was really hard. But it taught me a lot it taught me how to persevere taught me how to lean on my supports like my family taught me the importance of communication like um so very long-winded way to answer my experience in the western league was pretty unreal yeah well Mo, look <clears throat> sorry you ended like you covered some really good points one how far like that concussions come along and how it affected players back then and like now when you get a major concussion you're almost like a month just Extra. Auto, let alone Extra. how you're feeling yeah. like it doesn't matter you could feel yeah. fine you're you're a month yeah because it just has such significant effects yeah. on the brain and once you kind of get into that cycle and even with other injuries too like once you're in a cycle it's just trying to come back to an elite level without and them trying to rush you back because a lot of times those teams need you then it just doesn't like it's it's hard because a lot of times you're not ready and you're putting yourself in a position where you're more likely to get hurt and the competitor the player you're like i want to go man like put me in but yeah. like you need somebody to like hold you back because like you're a 16 year old dummy like <laughs> i was a 16 year old meathead man like you tell me to go chip a puck in and ram that demon of the glass that's what i'm doing like, yeah so you tell me to play i want to play i'm gonna play but yeah. i need a doctor to be like no you are not playing you yeah can't you gotta play. you gotta and they're doing seat. a good job of that today like i think all levels of hockey now they're they're making it about player safety and even for us like as officials the player safety is like prime it's yeah. like man these kids and these people are what people are paying to watch um, people are paying thousands of dollars to get their kids to these points and to have it all just wiped away with a cheap blow to the head yeah in an instant it's just... like we want that out of the game and i'm i'm a product of a guy that i remember getting the crosby chicken wing as it was going off to the bench in midget triple a and knocked out concussion borderline wrecked my career yeah but that kid didn't even get a penalty and like there's no and I, the ref can't stop it like the ref can't call a penalty and save my life yeah but the standard 
in the game now of protecting the players, protecting the head is crucial, especially yeah. with how fast it is. Oh, yeah. Now they're playing with more speed and more physicality. Or as much as it's not maybe a well, little the, bit less physical, but everyone's stronger. Yeah, and when you're going that fast time. and you make an impact, it's like you're getting hit by a truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, two guys skating. What can McDavid clock out at 30 kilometers an hour? Yeah. Two yeah. guys going 30 kilometers, like hitting, getting hit by a vehicle at 60 kilometers an hour oh, yeah. straight to the head. That's, oh, yeah. That has an effect on a person. Well, even there's like some nail guns. And like when I played, like I call a nail gun just a guy that can staple you into the boards. Like when I played, it was like Michael Furland, Dylan McElrath. Like I remember getting hit. Actually, Adam Cracknell, one of the best humans I've ever met. Probably doesn't even know who I am, but <laughs> I remember him. Um, I was 15 or 16 in my first camp in Kootenai. And Adam Cracknell was playing pro hockey, but he had played for Kootenai. And he was coming back just to get like his kind of reps in before he was going to his NHL camp. And he's playing in our scrimmage and he like, I swear, man, he just rubbed me out as a 16 year old. I felt like this shoulder touched this shoulder. <laughs> and uh, like, it was like, and I just remember feeling like, wow, okay. I'm a little boy in a man's league. I need to get in the gym. Like it was just, yeah. it was pretty cool. It was pretty eye opening. Yeah. Especially playing against those guys that are that big. They're and just... that's the spade, the speed, the strength. Like it is. Yeah. So the safety side of, the game and me having to lose it because of concussions does play into me being a ref like that passion to protect people i'm not like looking to call chintzy hits yeah but it's like the ones that put people in danger those need to be addressed and yeah whether it's a minor penalty or like whatever it is it's just that kind of also played into it like I feel like there's a reason I'm doing the levels I'm doing and I'm moving up through the ranks because I do have a passion to protect the players, but also to just be humble and understand that, like, I'm going to mess up sometimes. Like, you want a robot doing it? We got to get robots. Yeah, and we don't have robots to do it well, at this and point. Well, I personally don't want robots to do <laughs> no, it. No, it like, takes out all the... I can't, I can't muzzle a robot. Yeah. Not like in the... Not like in baseball where they're screwing up calls left and right right now in the major leagues and like they should almost come up with an automatic pitch zone, but well they need to add the challenge rule. Oh you know, yeah. I think if they're doing it in the minors, they're like piloting uh if a player thinks it was a ball and they called strike, he just like taps his head. And, and then like they a... do like a, it's like a ten second review and they do it on that thing and then it's like okay, it was it was a ball. Yeah. Players right. Yeah, especially probably within a certain margin of I think it's like nine seconds or ten seconds and you only get like two or three of them a game where you could be like Yeah. And know. probably if you're right you keep them and if you're wrong, you yeah, like same to the same as the NHL with their challenge rules yeah. almost. Yeah. But we'll move to I had a question. What's kind of the coolest game you've officiated so far? Good question. I think every game in the Western League. Um <laughs> honestly probably the hockey hooky game in Edmonton like there was 18,000 kids in Rogers Arena screaming like I'm not kidding man standing at center ice and just 18,000 voices but screaming like down oh kids are way more energetic than adults I have never been in a like I've been to the gold medal game where like Bedard and McTavish won where and McTavish pulled that goal off the yeah. goal line and then goes down and like we I've been in a rink where it's like that atmosphere and then 18,000 screaming kids is another thing like it's like my dad that I'm watching the game with, there's no way he's going to be screaming as loud as this kid beside me. Yeah. Oh, you give a bunch of 10 to 12 year olds and any like some close pop, to that age, some, a day off of school and some pop and some popcorn and each other. Like it was, so there was like six or seven instances where I'm just like in the neutral zone, like watching the play and it does the like get loud. And then I'm like getting goosebumps <laughs> like on my whole body. I'm just like, the energy is electric in here. So I think that, and it was a crazy game. Like Calgary was up three, one going into the third and, um, yeah, Edmonton came back to tie it up, and it was like they scored with a minute and a half left to tie it, and then they scored with like thirty seconds to win. And so, that was you were were you on there like the goal line for that one? Oh yeah, I was yeah, both I was goals. Say. I think you've seen it on my Instagram. I'm like yeah. on both. I had the tying goal. I was the down low ref, and then on the the game winner, I was the down low ref, and both times like just electric man. Yeah, like, just as dramatic as you just getting everybody oh, yeah. fired. And up. even my my partner, we come into the room. He's like. You an Edmonton fan, bud? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, man. Like, I'm from Calgary. Like, if we're gonna pick, like, there's no way I'm a fan. I'm just like, I'm a hockey fan, man. Yeah, they like, just came down. Oh. They came back three one. Like, yeah, and to get two in the last and two minutes. And there's eighteen thousand kids screaming. Like, dude, this is electric. Yeah, just Sorry. crazy. Oh, dude, he dude, said dude. he's just like, God, I'm so jealous now. <laughs> I wish I was down there. 
<laughs> oh yeah, because yeah, you gotta watch your buddy do it right in front. You're like, oh man, like that oh. could have been me making that call. Even I watched the video back. I'm like, oh, that was so sick. Yeah, and just you're so hype on yourself, just getting all fired up because that'd best, be so it's, cool. It's the best feeling being in that league, and um, the only other game would be the Teddy Bear Toss game in Red Hat. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, the one being a part of one of those games. Would yeah, be cool for sure. Yeah, no, but I think there's gonna be lots of other. Like I said, every game I treat kind of like it's a, it's to me very cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you had talked about this last summer. Um, you got to, you got to officiate one of the games at the World Junior Tri or Selection oh, yeah. Camp, mm-hmm. and that was was that when Bedard was there? No, he was like hurt or something. Him and Savoy, like Matt Savoy. Oh were, yeah, yeah. They both weren't there because those were the two guys that I was like, kind of hunting, looking for. Like, where are they? Yeah, as a fan, but. You got to ref that game, kind of working towards international. What was that like with a lot of like world junior caliber players on there? It's funny, man. You you work like Bantam AA hockey or midget AA, and then you go work an event like that. It's easier. Like as long as you can skate, like the biggest thing is the skating and the fitness, and then being able to process the plays. But like I, with my playing background, like I was playing with Sammy Reinhardt and like some of the best players in the world you kind of process it naturally as like an ex player. So for me, it was like, because I can keep up and I can stay out of their way. It was like, Oh, that's like, I don't need to call anything. Like they're like playing hockey constantly. It yeah. flows. Like they're too focused on playing the game. It's, they're so good. And they're so skilled. They're not like making dumb hits. They're not doing, I call them like chicken <laughs> plays. Um, the rare one you get, but like for me, it was like, it was a blast. It was like basically like watching guys I'm going to be cheering for in a few months at the world juniors. Um, I'm getting to work with them and in my, I, I'm a servant. Like I tell myself every day, I'm here to serve these kids. I'm here to serve the game and the people that I'm working with. Um, so that was just like a, I think it was like a tip of the cap. Like you guys have worked really hard. Here's kind of a fun event. It's a scrimmage. Yeah. It's an exhibition thing. So there was no pressure, Not too much pressure. On Not it, at yeah. all. The players, it's Canada versus Canada. <clears throat> Right, so they're, they're not trying to kill each other. No, there's no hate. So it was it was easy. It was a lot of fun just getting to be on the ice with those guys. Yeah, that would be super cool. And then now to kind of another international thing, you just got selected to go play at the Holink or not play ref the mm-hmm. Holinka Gretzky in August, and that's in Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. And what what was that feeling like? Kind of getting selected, and then in anticipation, what's the prep work for it? Getting selected, if, just cry. Tears of joy. Um, <laughs> honestly, man, I would be lying to you if I said I didn't. I had like just I was talking to people, I was talking to my family, and it was just like I'd probably cry right now just thinking about it. Like it's a huge honor. Um, you grow up as a kid wanting to wear the leaf as a player. Um, next best thing would probably be on the ice is refing. Um, yeah. so it's a dream come true. Um I've told all my friends that, like, dude, this feels like a dream. Like, I'm just like, I don't even know what to say. Like, it's such a dream come true that I get to do what I love and get to do it at that level. And um, I think it's going to be an amazing experience. And what was the second part of the question? Kind of just prep work. Oh, prep. It. Fitness. Like, just they're all these kids all summer are going to be, I call them kids, but they're teenagers. Um, they're prepping. Like, they're going to be working their butt off in the gym and, the speed of the game is so fast that like we travel so much in the season, like as a ref, like I still work full time and then I go ref on the weekends um, and we're driving long days, getting to the rink after driving all day. Um, so you don't really get as much time as I think you'd like to like train during the winter and like maintain your fitness. So yeah. for officials, when we're at like that level, it's, it's the same as the players we take our off season and we try and soak up as much off season time as we can, like golfing, getting to the mountains and hanging out, but it's a grind. Like you're just, you're trying to get in better shape because that's the expectation with the players. It's the same for us. Yeah. Yeah. And they just get faster and faster and they get to take off. Like, right. They're only on the ice for 20 minutes a game. What is it like kind of as a ref being on, you're out there the whole time. You better be in shape. Like there, (laughs) I, I recall, doing that max midget tournament or the circle K tournament here in Calgary. And that was two years ago. I did it and everything's like four man system now. So like in officiating, there's four guys on the ice or there's three. And when there's three, it's only one referee who's skating the whole length of the ice. So have fun doing that midget triple a for 60 minutes. Yeah. It's insane. The amount of work. So I remember as an, I'm pretty new to refing. So back two years ago, I hadn't skated a single three man, game all year 
not once. And then so here, do some Ninja Triple A and do your first one three man. So I was like over skating everything. So there's like a way to like be in position and kind of mitigate your need to skate. Yeah. But I'm just like, I got to get there. So I'm just <laughs> like busting. By the third period, probably like five minutes in, <clears throat> legs just completely cramping up, like locking up, like seizing. Like I'm like to get going. I'm like <laughs> kicking, like punching a leg to like lift up. And then it was like muscle memory, like. I gotta skate. Yeah, gotta just kind of like lean forward and hopefully your feet catch it. Yeah, so that's like a, like that was kind of when I was out of shape, didn't understand the importance of fitness. Um, So now it's like, I don't ever want to feel that again. And there's times where like, I've done it in the Western League this year. We're we're in Prince George. We drive all day. You get to Prince George, you're in the third period and you haven't drinking enough water. And you're like, you can feel like you're dehydrated and you're like, this can't be an excuse. Like this can't, so all things that I've learned from, like, just it seems silly, but like hydrating, like when I'm in the, on the car, in the car, on the road all day, like making sure I'm drinking enough. And a lot of times when you're driving, you're thinking, okay, if I don't drink much water, like I have to pee. stop less. Exactly. So it's like, it's kind of like things that I've learned as a rookie in the league, like how to be able to get myself through those 60 minutes. Um, but really the fitness is like, makes it a lot easier when you're in good shape. What do you kind of do? for fitness training during the summer ton of cardio it's a lot of cardio yeah the guys do different things um depends on your schedule like we're not i don't need as a ref like i'm not separating bodies per se i don't really need to have a huge upper body Um, almost want a lighter upper body skating that far exactly so my thing is and i think a lot of refs is we do a lot of endurance um so it's we want to have a really good score on the beep test and we want to have good core strength and and enough muscle to stay safe yeah. Like there's times where players lose an edge and they come hard into you in the end wall and you're stuck. You can't go anywhere and they just hammer into your bottom half. And if you don't have muscle to protect yourself, like something's going to pop, something's going to get hurt. Yeah. So almost we, like a much more tensile speed skater where yes. you just have to have that lower body power and, but a lot more stable because you could get knocked off your feet at any time. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of cardio and core. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes more sense and kind of what I was thinking running through my head, because I can only ever picture the, the hockey guys and they're just throwing as much weight around yeah, as they squats, can. And, yeah. like, and I still do, like I have a squat rack at home, but it's, like I said, I'm doing more reps, less weight, yeah. just to try and build that endurance. Yeah, no, that makes sense for sure. Um, One of the questions that I had, and you kind of talked about it earlier, how important communication is, but how do you kind of deal with a coach when either they think you're wrong or you are actually wrong? Honesty. Own it. Like don't do it often like don't mess up often because then you're going to lose respect like yeah. when i'm coming to you five or six times a game and i'm like ah like i just messed that up they're going to be like yeah. dude you've said that six times today like you're just terrible stop talking to us that would be i haven't had that experience but i can imagine that's how it would go um so first of all don't mess up a lot yeah um but like it's going to happen and there was a game last game of the year i can use the example um Red Deer versus Edmonton, Lejoie, cross checks, Latimer, right in front of the net. There's about two minutes left in the game. They're, it's a war. Like, they're, it's a battle. Like, it's yeah. hard. Personally, I thought Lejoie's stick was already, like, broken. So when he, like, cross-checked him, like, to me, it was, like, optically, this just looks bad. But I'm actually oh. okay with that. Yeah. But then I kind of, like, start skating away, and I'm like, you know, that should have been a call. Like, optically, it looks like a call. The whole world thinks it's a call. His stick breaks on, like, I can sell that as a penalty. So that I go right away to Kai, like you, Chaz, yeah. at the stoppage. And I just grab him, and I'm like, as he's going off, I'm like, Kai, because he, I think he said to me, he's like, Jess, is that not a call? And I'm like, Kai, I'm not going to lie to you. I think that is. I I just think I don't react in the second I could have reacted, and that's on me. I just I, I, I just said I f***ed up. Yeah. And we're about at the bench now. And like, I'm doing my line change. And so I kind of was going to go and take a chance to let the bench know, like as well, guys, that's a penalty. Like we don't get to cross check guys like that. Yeah. That's a penalty. That's my up. The coach hears it. The bench hears it. Everyone's like, good. We're, yeah. we're fine. As long as you know, that's a penalty. As long as you're not going to miss it twice. Like we can still work, work with you and we can just move on. Except for Latimer. He wasn't very happy. He was like, are you kidding me? You broke a stick on me. And in my head, I'm like, man, you can give it to me. Like. This yeah, is the enough. this is the time where you can like give it to me. Just don't cross the line. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Kai said that he's like, "Okay, hey, that's good. Like, stop. 
Yeah. So I just own it. Like for me, it's accountability. And that was coming from the player background. Like just own it, man. Like you're not perfect. Like why do you pretend to be? Yeah. You, there's only, yeah, if you were perfect, we wouldn't really be human. Like it's just, you're yeah. completely perfections out of the picture. So you kind of talked about dealing with Latimer, dealing with Uchez. What is it like building kind of relationships with players as you ref those games or being able to communicate with them? I love that. I think the the part of like building rapport with players is a skill. Um, some guys are good at it. Some guys aren't. I know like I speak from experience from the player's mindset where the guys that just give you the time, like it's five seconds, man. Like just hear me out. Yeah. That makes a massive difference. Like it's like, it's it, to me, it's an attitude thing. So it's like, um, it's a humility thing. Like I'm not better than you. Yeah. I'm not above you. To me, my mindset every game is like coaches, players, refs should be working together to keep this game safe, fair, fun. Not even fun. Like at the levels I'm at now, I, like I don't. Less about. <laughs> it's a more of a job. It's more of a profession. Like these guys are trying to make a career out of this. So the fun part doesn't really play. But when I still go back, like I don't, I don't, I'm not above skating a midget triple A game or a bad triple A or midget B or anything. I don't, I'm not above any of it. So that's when it's more about fun. Yeah. But my mindset is coaches, players, refs all work together. And I think just that mindset and that humility plays like it, it comes, comes across well in all situations, really. Um, like when I'm listening to a coach, I'm not trying to just like shove my point of view down his throat. Like, I'm like, I hear you, but this is what I see. And this is what I'm going with. Yeah. And like, I get it. You're not going to like it, but this is what it is. So like the honesty, the humility, like those are just skills, but like building the rapport with every player in the league is such a cool feeling when you go from game one to when you don't know who this guy is to game 60 and you're like talking to each other on a first name basis and you're having conversations about plays rather than yelling about it. Like it's, yeah. it's, it makes your game and your ability to ref the game so much easier. Yeah. Well, I could imagine being able, yeah. And you, does it ever affect you when you start to learn tendency tendencies? A little of players? bit. Yeah. A little bit. Like, honestly, like you think a guy, like, I respect a guy that plays hard. I have a really, I'm not going to say a leash for a guy that plays hard, but, like, if you play tough, I kind of know what the line is for a guy that plays tough. Like, so in front of the net, for example, like, as a forward, I always hated when guys would get away with just cross-checking the crap out of me on the rib cage. Yeah. So, like, with certain D-men, like, I'll tell them, like, if you're going to do it, you got to push them on their pants and you got to, like, steer them. You can't just be burying cross-checks. Yeah, into it's their, not kidney shots. Yeah, it's... where their padding is not there. Like, I played, I know what you're doing. So, like, you start to learn, like, actually, you know, I should reverse it. They kind of learn how you ref. So then, like, I don't need to call it because, like, game one, I see it. I'll nip it in the butt. I'll tell you. And then the tendencies, it's like, I know you're tough. I know you play a certain way. Yeah. So then when you cross the line, as long as I've communicated with you that, like, here's what the line is, then when they cross it, it's, like, plain as day. They like, have no defense. No, and they don't. They're like, yeah, that was a good one, Jess. Like, they're going to the box, like. Yeah, that was what you told me. So I think the like rapport and, and those sort of things like plays into like those tough situations when you've got to make calls on guys that just play tough. Yeah. But they cross the line. Yeah, no, for sure. And when you kind of set a line, it's yeah, like you said, it's really easy to see them. Yeah, when you can communicate the line, it's yeah. easy to like call the penalty. Yeah, to see them kind of just step over step it. outside. It's and, clear as day. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, there's the kidney shot I told you to avoid. <laughs> Who's kind of, actually, this is one that I kind of just thought of. Who's one of the funnier players that you've interacted with throughout the year? Or a couple of them, or, like, some of the funnier interactions that you've had with some of the players? That's a good question. I think, um, I think like, Connor Geeky is, seems like quite a character. Um, just seems like, coming from Wenatchee to Swift Current, um, there's times where, like, just listening to him talk and, and having a couple conversations with him, he seems like he'd be a really good guy just to kind of like chat with and pick his brain. And he seems like he'd have a good sense of humor. But I thought, I think honestly, like there's um, not many guys where I have like funny interactions with because we're, we're so it's professional and, and yeah. And like there's the odd chirp. Like I, I can't really reflect on like who said it or, or what they said even, but there's just, like I said to you before, there's times where 
the odd guy just says something funny and you just can't help but be like, okay, that was good. It's like, that was clever. Um, but I don't think there's anyone specifically that I could say is like funny. Cause again, like they're not coming up to me to try and be funny. They're coming yeah. up to me. If they're coming up to you, they probably got a problem. With something. Exactly. Or the, exactly. Or they're trying to get on the same page of like, okay, what's the face off standard? Why is that not a penalty? Like they're not coming up to me to just shoot. Them. Yeah. So not many chances where I got to experience the funny side of them. Well, we'll stick on the funny. So, I'm assuming you get to hang out with the refs a lot, and you've met a ton of refs mm-hmm. throughout your career refing. Who's one of the funnier officials that you've worked with? Favorite, like, for humor, for just, like, making the room light, keeping everybody, like, honest, but, like, light, Mike Roberts. Calgary guy, he works in the American Hockey League as a linesman, um, one of the most amazing officials in the province. Um, but just... Like, I, this is a great story. Um, I'm in Lethbridge. It's my first game in Lethbridge. So I come from Red Deer. We pick Mike up in Calgary. We end up getting to Lethbridge. Um, I'm with Brian McDonald. He's from Edmonton. He's a veteran in the league. We're driving. We get to the rink. Everything's smooth. Great time. We're having a good conversation. We're getting prepared. Everything's going great. We get on the ice. We're about three minutes in like 17, 18 minutes on the first period. And I'm doing my line change at center. I skate over. I point at, like, neutral zone face off. Go ahead. Mike just stares at me, just like this. Just just glaring, just staring. Just doesn't stop. So I'm, like, front of the benches. Now I'm where I should be, my, like, other neutral zone dot standing there. Like, okay, hey, what's going on? Like, can we drop a puck? He's still just like looking at me, just glaring, man. Doesn't even worry about his wingers, isn't doing anything with his like wingers. He's just glaring at me. And then, so I'm kind of like, what did I just mess up? Like, I must have like screwed something up. Like, whether it was like I let somebody change, it shouldn't have changed. Like, I missed like a, a no change situation. Like, I did something. And um, it like legit rattled me. I was like, I was in like fourth or fifth gear to start the game. And he was like, I got to be dialed. Like, I got to get into sixth gear right now. So he literally keeps staring at me, looks back at his puck, looks back up at me. This was like 15, it felt like fucking five minutes, but it was probably like 20 seconds. Anyway, literally one look, bang, puck's down. So we get to the ref, the TV timeout. I asked Brian, I'm like, Brian, did I mess something up? Like, what's going on? Why did Mike just glare through my soul? Like, what are you talking about? Why did, what are you, what, what, what are you talking about? Mike just glared through my soul at that face off at like 17 minutes. He's like, I don't think we did anything. I think we're fine. I think we're in a good spot. So still like scrambling. Okay. We get to the intermission skating off the ice. Like Robbie, like, are we good? Like, did I mess something up? He just looks at me. He's like, what are you talking about? Like just happy (laughs) back to Robbie. Just like happy go lucky guy. And I'm like, you glared through my soul, man. Like I was rattled the whole period after that. And he just starts laughing. He's like, oh, I was just <laughs> with you. <laughs> Man, like, that legit rattled me. Like, yeah, just completely throw you off your Yeah, but just a veteran in the league that's just, like, so good at what he does that he can take a minute to just, like, ma- like literally make a laugh. Like, that'll be a story. It is a story that I'll have forever. Yeah. Oh. So the Mike's, Mike's a great guy and in the room, off the ice, on the ice. He's hilarious, so... Yeah, Mike Roberts. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a, that's a great story too. That'd be oh, that would terrify me, especially if you're having an experienced guy do he's, that. He's he's like a finals guy. Like he's like one of the best. And you're just like, oh my, like I look up to you, and you're mad at me right now. Oh no. <laughs> Perfect. We'll keep rolling through some of the funnier questions. What's one of your favorite? We've talked about a lot of them, but what's one of your favorite hockey memories, either as a player or an official, kind of going through? Um. Player, I would say, honestly, it's got to be, like, the the friends. Like, so cheesy, but it's true. Like, those will last forever. Um, Playing, like, I think, I think, yeah, I think Berkeley said it in his interview with you guys. Like, spring teams, like, yeah, I honestly can say the same thing. Like, my couple spring teams up in Edmonton, like, those were the best years. Um, I would, I would just say, like, it's friends. Like, that's kind of my biggest experience in hockey that is my favorite um and then officiating i'd say it's like honestly it's got to be getting selected for this ivan holinka gretzky cup and then just being hired to the western league like no game specific 
Um, I think just the whole experience of getting to the league and, and how much work it took and the perseverance of like coming back to the game after losing it and just kind of giving myself another chance to do something. Yeah. So in general, I'd say just the people. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And that's what a lot of people talk about when they kind of come out of hockey after is it's all about the people that you met when you go through. And so we'll kind of stick, let's go, we'll go to the summertime now that we're kind of going into summer. What are your summertime hobbies when you're not reffing? What are you, what are you doing? Farming, working, trying to get projects done around the farm. Um, I just started golfing a few summers ago. So, and I broke my hand that first summer. So I golfed yeah. like twice. Um, so I'm pretty crappy at it, but I'm getting better. Uh, that's been a ton of fun. Um, but yeah, it's like rest. I've got a lot of animals on the farm. Um, I like to spend time with them, spend time with family, camp. I mean, we camp at the farm. <laughs> so and it's just, still feels like a vacation. Maybe. It is, man. It's yeah. such a big property. It's so easy to just. So I, I would say, yeah, golf, camp, hang out with family and um, run the hockey camp. Yeah. Be in the, be in the rink for 40 hours a week. <laughs> yeah, just hanging out and Helping looking after a bunch of kids. Pretty much. Yeah, babysitting on it. No, it's not. It's <laughs> like, it is at times. Yeah, there's off days, the ice it definitely was. There's days where it feels like babysitting, but I think overall, like, it's such a good atmosphere, um, the hockey camp in Sylvan, and um, I look forward to that every summer now. So. Yeah. No, it's and it's fun to work there, and you only ever have to, you get kids, and you get a, such a quick rotation of kids that you yes. get to make so many relationships, yeah. but you're also not sticking with the same group and yeah. dealing with the same kids all summer like it's new group oh have a blast new group have a blast and it's just over and over and you get yeah. to feel that whole coming together in a week week after week as an instructor and it's totally it's pretty fun and seeing all the other instructors like they all go play other places and yeah we all get to come home and just be in the rink together it's quite a fun fun little way to spend five hours a day monday to friday yeah yeah, for sure. Um, you mentioned you got a lot of animals on the farm. You do have a couple of wolves. Yeah, well, I mean, I said lots of animals. I have dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got, like, five dogs. Um, yeah, no, we have the, the wolves. The, like, neighbors all have cattle and livestock, but nothing for me on the on our land. Um, so, yeah, the, the wolf dogs specifically, like, we do, um, like, I got, this is a whole other podcast interview, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, like, We've rescued them. They're not like pets. Um, I volunteered at like a sanctuary when I was recovering from concussions. So I was in my own little healing, trying to get better. And I had nothing but time. So I was volunteering at Yamnuska Wolf Dog Sanctuary, just oh, yeah. Cochrane and um, another place just outside of Alberta. And yeah, I've just built relationships and um, there was an opportunity to rescue a couple. And because I have land and the ability to put up the fencing, like the enclosure that they need. We, we were lucky enough to rescue two of them, but we do like, we have a couple of classrooms that come out. We do like education stuff as much as we can to try and teach people about like wildlife conservation, just taking care of like our natural world and trying yeah. to keep them wild rather than seeing them in an enclosure. Get domesticated. And... Yeah. So that's like a passion of mine. It's like a hobby. Um, like work takes priority obviously but that's if i get spare time that's usually where i'm spending it is on the farm with the animals in some way or my family yeah no for sure that's a great way to spend your time too oh i'm pretty lucky yeah no kidding i think i got one last question before we'll we'll end this interview just who are the there's only four teams left in the stanley cup who do you got winning or who are you cheering for cheering for nobody who's <laughs> born in calgary just loyal sticking it out with Calgary so cheering for nobody right now um I lived in Edmonton during the 06 cup run like my when my parents split up I went with mom and we lived in Edmonton yeah we were like five blocks away from Rexall Place so I kind of experienced what that city is like when they're on a cup run yeah and just like the the joy like everyone's happy everyone's Timmy's like you don't pay for your Timmy's because everyone's <laughs> paying for it like yeah it's just a different city so as an Albertan, I'm like, I would be happy if they won because to me the bars are full. Like, yeah, honestly, it just seems like it's a better place to be when they're winning. It's another couple of weeks of prosperity. Yeah, and city. it's it's just a fun vibe. It's a fun energy. So, um, I I like want Edmonton to win. Um, 
I think it's going to be them and Florida. Yeah. And I actually, I, so Knobloch was my coach in Kootenai. Oh, really? So at 16, I had Knobber coach me, and I think he was, I'd, I've, I've had a lot of really good coaches, but he was probably all around the best coach I've ever experienced. And when he got hired by Edmonton, I said to like in a group chat, just to my friends, like, oh, there's for the cup. Because I was like, I believe in he him. He came like, in right when they were at the bottom. Okay. And but I was like, I, and I, I've said it down to like referees traveling to like games where we're listening to like the overdrive where the Oilers have lost five in a row. They lost to San Jose. Yeah. They were like, the world was like falling. <laughs> like it was like the world's over. And I remember just thinking like, this is embarrassing. Like two weeks from now, they're going to be on a five game win streak. I'm not kidding. I said this word for word to Brian. And he, and I was like, they're going to be on a two game win streak. And this is going to be embarrassing how they like, try and like push people out of town and they make it so hard for like Skinner and Woodcroft and people to be people now. Like yeah. it's so unfair. And I was kind of like disgusted. Like I was like, Oh, and, and it's so like, these are people and you're just like literally um, two weeks from now, you're going to have your whole script flipped and everything you just put them on blast for is going to be forgotten. Yeah. And to me that bothered me. Cause I was just like, I literally in my heart, I was like, they're a great team. Like they just need to, figure it out and yeah. then they figured it out and now um that was all the questions i got unless you got anything i think we're pretty much no i've off. no man i'm i've been on we have a puppy at the farm right now too my dad just got a puppy and he was out of town for work for the week so yeah. i've been like you probably see the circles under my eyes i'm like <laughs> getting up at like 4 a.m taking the puppy out to pee and again waking up at six two hours later it's like oh my gosh i need some sleep so no i've got nothing i'm like do you want to do this again sometime? I'm sure. Oh, well, I, we'll definitely get you back on in the future. Yeah, no, I'd love to. I think you guys are doing a great job and growing the game at the grassroots level is kind of what I'm passionate about. And it seems like this is kind of the like um, audience you're attracting is kind of kids and the younger yeah. generation that's like interested in this. So I'm happy to be a part of it. It's cool. Yeah, thanks. That means a lot. And uh, thanks for hopping on. You're welcome. That was Jesse Woodshots. He's a WHL ref. It was great talking to him. Like like I said, he just sat and we talked and we probably worked for forty minutes. Like it was a it was a fun time sitting down with him. Known him for a lot of years, working at the hockey camp with him in Sylvan Lake. And yeah, a lot of cool stories about just kind of being in and around the WHL and what it's like going through as a ref compared to a player. Because we've had a lot of players come on and talk about it. It was one that we've been excited for talking about a ref. But now before we put you into the next interview. Me and Dylan are going to talk playoffs for a little bit just because we got some got some hair on the line in this and it's ta it's taking a turn. So we'll start out west where my Canadian team is. Dylan, are you at all nervous with Edmonton splitting in Dallas? Stealing one in Texas is big. I do. I do like that um, for for Edmonton, but we have seen the stars be road dogs and they just get the job done on the road. So. From a betting perspective, I, I've i never been more confident in my life about the Stars. <laughs> close wow. Close going into Edmonton. Out. They did go into Vegas and take two. And Vegas is like the toughest road rank during the regular season. Of course, Edmonton's a different beast in the playoffs because yeah. Canadian teams are so lame during the regular season. And then they just kick it up to 100 when they're in the playoffs. What a barn, what so, a barn that is in the playoffs. I was just happy, like, watching game one and even game two, like, they rolled four lines. Skinner was good enough to get the job done. Like, I in game two, they didn't score enough. But they rolled four lines, and they didn't get – they didn't get pummeled, those fourth That's... and third and fourth lines. Like, they weren't ne that negative, and they put themselves in a position that if McDavid and Dreisaitl turned on, they actually can win, which is way more than I had hoped for going into this series. Yeah, the – the whole Edmonton MO thing is you got to roll four lines. That's when they're playing their best hockey. And when they don't, and when they kind of pin McDavid and Dreisaitl to 25 plus minutes, that's when they kind of, you start to see games slip away from them. So I think if Edmonton can get some solid goaltending, continue to get depth scoring and roll those four lines, maybe you, you be, I become a little, a little more scared as a stars guy right now, but uh, it's, I mean, last night's game, I guess we're recording this Sunday. So Saturday night was, it was pretty tight for the most being. I mean, a couple tip-ins. Yeah. I think we're both tip-ins. Or no, Ben went, 
then went five full, and then and then it was a tip in. So, I mean, Skinner played pretty good, but I yeah. think at the end of the day, like this is going to be a series. Yeah, and that's more than I was hoping for with with Skinner being kind of sketch and getting the game seven when was big, and if he can kind of roll with the confidence that he's got going right now and not lose it and at least give them a chance. Like I, I would love to just have a chance, but I think if Edmonton wants to win, I think they need to win both at home because them only having one shot to close it out in game six, like I don't, they need to close it out in six because Peter DeBoer is a game seven wizard. He's eight. No in his career. Yeah. So I just don't think that if, if they go to seven, I think they're screwed, but We'll see how yeah. it goes. This will be posted probably the night of game three. So I guess we'll know kind of by the time this is most of the viewers will know how that went by the time they look at this. So, yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll keep tabs on that and keep, keep strong for, I just want to give Dylan a scare. That's all I want is give him a scare in the finals. I'd be I'd, perfectly I'd, fine. I'd love for, Hey, I'd love to see it though. Like I'd be kind of all in. I think whoever comes out of the West wins, though. So that makes me nervous. And I, I had a wonderful idea the other day. I'm thinking now, shave your head all the way down the middle, like a reverse mohawk with, like, nice blue coming out the sides. Oh, God. Yeah, that was what, what kind of went through my mind. And it's going to look really cool at your family reunion, you know. So we'll probably, we'll probably end up doing the haircuts in Vegas, would be my guess. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Right at the end of the That's Vegas trip. Filthy. Okay, I like it. Fair enough. But we'll keep we'll keep posted and see how it goes over the next little bit. But let's switch over to the the other series before we kind of throw it to that last interview. And I mean, what do you think so far? This series rocks. Like there is just goals being scored left and right. We had three guys on hat trick watch today. Like blows my mind. But these are. When you look at the like numbers though, Florida's been a better team, like through and through. Like they've outchanced New York. Shisterkin's been lights out. So I mean, both these teams are so, so good. And I wanna kind of retract my statement, whoever comes out of the West wins, but both these West teams are just so heavy, but so are these East teams in a sense too. They just kind of get the job done. So but this is this has been a heavyweight tilt, and I've I've been all aboard watching this series. Yeah, the Panthers are a scary team to whoever comes out of the West. But I mean, Regs are up two one now, and I don't know. Like it's been, it's been wild. What do you think about the? We'll go to the Truba flying elbow today. Did you see it? Jail, jail. Oh yeah, <laughs> assault. <laughs> he should be locked up in federal prison. <laughs> oh yeah, it was wild. Like. I mean, to add that type of craziness on top of all the goals that are being scored, I mean, Jace took the under today in that game, thinking Bob <laughs> and Shesterkin are going to get her done at under five and a half. How about no oh. thank you almost at the end of the first? It was double the five and a half. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, it, was a, it was a tough look for Jace, but yeah, like ton of goals and you, yeah, man. It's, been, it's been fun to watch. Oh, watch the, the best. I mean, did you see the oh the Laf- Lafreniere goal today? Both of them. The two. Well, yeah, both of them were gross, disgusting. but the toe drag one was. Oh, and then he almost slit Bobrovsky's throat open. That was terrifying. Yeah, that part was a little sketch. <laughs> but yeah, no, he just danced and then went backhand shelf. <laughs> I saw wow. a stat like in the last half hour that he is now in the top four for left wingers in the playoffs. It's like Kachuk. Hyman, Robertson, Lafreniere. Seems like a pretty cherry-picked stat. <laughs> well, but did you hear the three other guys on that list? Like, to even consider oh. him in that conversation. Hey, I'm going to give him his flowers because he's emerging into a, a very promising young talent, which I, I'm a big fan, and I like to see it. But top four left wing <laughs> scoring. <laughs> yeah, as I said it, I kind of realized how picked that stat was, but – that's, That's okay. okay. No, he's playing well. He's playing well. And I, I love seeing this 2020 draft class start to work out. Like Lafreniere is making a name for himself. He's playing some good hockey. Yeah. No, he's been performing really well for sure. And then, yeah, from, I mean, I would love to, we could talk about this way longer. We could talk about both series way longer, but we're kind of on a time <laughs> crunch here because we had two interviews that ran 
pretty long and t- are going to take up a lot of this episode. So yeah, let's. Uh, One more thing. One oh, more thing. Sorry. Minnesota, PWHL oh. fans. I apologize. You just got robbed of the first ever cup. Was it the Walter Cup? The Walter something cup? That's uh, I don't remember, but yeah, I can't remember. Jace, Jace says yeah. Like Jace confirms it. Robbed. I mean, you just. I couldn't even believe it. I just couldn't believe it. The, and, that the, those are my girls, Taylor Heisey. Like now it's game five in Boston. I know, dude. I know. So by the time that happens, uh, the PWHL will be over. So we'll dive a little deeper. We said that last week, but I mean, with these two interviews, we can don't really have any have any room to work with, like Luke said. So, but anyways, I just wanted to say that we got a game yeah. five in in the finals. So. Be on the lookout for that because it's going to be a doozy. Mem cops on. We've already had some games. So, but anyways, go ahead, Luke. Sorry, I did have one last thing. Just because the World Championships ended, checks are unreal. Oh, dude, that was awesome. They were so good in that whole tournament. Like, Mm -hmm. I watched the state's quarterfinal, and that American team was like, oh, these guys are competing for Olympic spots. They should be, they're young guys. They should be flying. And that Czech team was faster and stronger and just played a more complete game. Yeah. Oh, Caulfield look like Caulfield's a pretty sturdy dude when he plays in the show and he looks soft. Like those check boys made him look soft. He just touched the puck and he was getting hammered. American hockey, baby. Yeah. Makes me feel better about our chance at the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Scares me about the checks. We don't have a goalie. Stuart Skinner. He's my guy. <laughs> give him, give him one more year to develop. He's going to get the exit button. Where's the lead Where... button on this call? How do I get out of here? <laughs> Before Dylan leaves, we'll toss it over to the interview where we're sitting down. We're up in Fort St. John, me, Dylan, Caleb Adlin, my little brother, and my little cousin Sullivan DeCare, U13 BC Provincial Champion. Ladies and gents, we are back. <laughs> Caleb's laughing because he's a goof. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what? Did I... No, I want to do it again. No, it was a good catch on okay. game. Yeah, no, I was good. feeling pretty good sure. about it. They let me do the intro. This never I happens. Like I like but... it. We're up in beautiful British Columbia, except probably the worst part of it. We're in Fort St. John, B.C., <laughs> yeah. where Dylan is from, and I'm from originally. And today, we're just going to be kind of shooting. The- we got uh, my little cousin, Sally Care. He's a U13. Is it Tier 1? Tier well, Yeah. For your provincial? Tier 1 today. <laughs> tier 1 today. <laughs> we got a U13 Tier 1 provincial champion. They just won. And a, my little brother, Caleb, who the Brandon Wheat Kings. And I don't know why he's back, but he's just kind of around today. So here he is. <laughs> you to bring your little brother to work today. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, we'll kick it right off. Sully, you guys were hosting provincials. Yeah. And kind of how did it go? I mean, we mentioned that you won gold, but you kind of want to talk about the gold game first? The gold game? Well... It was interesting. It was really loud in the building. Yeah. Like for the Pomeroy, it was huge, and um, we got scored on first shift. That sucked. That was the end <laughs> of everything. Yeah. And then um, tied it back up. It was. Didn't you score the time goal? Yeah. Thanks to you. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Clear. And then um, humble brag. <laughs> then we went down. Went down three one at the end of the first. Then uh, momentum change in the second. Scored Levi Echo scored from the point with a Richard that went five foot somehow. <laughs> and then Stop uh, look on the other and, the uh, okay. <laughs> and then thirty seconds later, our line comes down. Brody shoots it low, love I think scores. And then the mo- mo- momentum change was just crazy, especially in the finals. And then. We didn't score. Nobody scored till three minutes, three fifty-five left in the game. It was our line again. <laughs> <laughs> Holy! Humble brags. Humble brags. Gibson, uh, Gibson Harvey just went to the net. It was off a draw. How'd it go? Oh, Brody pushed it, shot off the pad, and then it was just. Buzzing around. Wellesley Kaiser missed two open nets. <laughs> and then, and, uh, so, <laughs> and then no. Kipton, and then Kipton came in and freaking buried one. And then they took a what did they take? Oh, one of their one of their guys took a greasy slashing penalty. <laughs> and then Hunter scored on the power play. 
The goalie knocked it in herself. It went five when she fell back and her elbow hit the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was the sealer. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. I know when we, me and Dylan were watching oh. the game and then had to go to rec league or, or intramurals or whatever. <laughs> so we paused the game on Facebook because that's what we were watching it on. <laughs> Left, went and played our game. Came back, tried to skip through the Facebook live so we didn't see the score and catch up and then rewatch the whole game at what we were probably three in the morning. It was late. It was, <laughs> we had school the next we day. An absolute barn burner of an intramural game. Eleven <laughs> thirty start time. <laughs> then we decided to come home, watch some some provincial. Yeah. Life. But what I did want to ask is what was coach's speech like between <laughs> the second and the third? Between the second. Uh, Get the job done. <laughs> oh, yeah, get the job done. Point. And, yeah. Shout and, out G Nasty. That's <laughs> kind of typical G. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I was just get the job done and take take gold on home ice. And then he just went out. Falls in your court, boy. Yeah. Was there kind of like a specific moment that really got the momentum going the other? Or just maybe that, like, the goal oh. to take it to 3 2 instead of 3 1? Yeah, but, well. Maybe that first shift in a second because, yeah, because Hunter's line and then Walt well, came out of the zone and then it just went back in and then Hunter took it. Yeah, and it was just the 3 2 goal that sparked everything. Yeah, and it just came back. Yeah. Me and Dylan were on the edge of our seat. We almost missed. We were almost late for intermittals. <laughs> we're, we're going bananas. Like, like, you couldn't have found two bigger fans. Of Pee Wee Double A. It hockey. was absolutely ridiculous. Like, scooch over hockey moms. We got, <laughs> we got these two donkeys Watch sitting out. at their kitchen table. Watch yeah. it. You guys threw uh, quite the party after, hey, too. Oh, at our event. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Even a super wow. the party. Oh, oh no was getting rowdy? Well... Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't. We didn't go to bed till like four that morning, Ooh. so it was it was a late night. I but. like that. Yeah, because right. after you went to bed, I texted Sully, and there was we finished watching the game at three, and I texted Sully. I'm like, congrats, he'll see this in the morning. Good stuff. He texted me back two hours later after I went to bed. <laughs> it was like four in the morning, Alberta time. I'm like, oh boys, they must be going nuts. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. There was a lot of people. Did you have to give the banner back? No, it's still in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my closet. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I saw a wonderful picture of your dad had it hung right yeah. in the front window. <laughs> it of was their up house. there. It was up there from like that day to what was it? Oh, to like freaking May, May, <laughs> May sixth. Oh. It was just hanging up there, and then mom was like, "No, it's gotta go." <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like a Christmas tree. <laughs> Yeah. Up There's long. always someone who loves it and someone <laughs> keeping, who doesn't. Keeping it up for way too long or not <laughs> enough time. It's a hero bait. Yeah, until, and until the title's taken, really. Oh yeah. Good defending point. champs, thank yeah. you. Yeah, well, speaking of defending champs, your first year, so you're going back to play oh, Kiwi. Yeah. Yeah. How's oh, the boy. team shaping up next year? What do you think you guys are gonna do? Next year? Well, <laughs> 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 we got some prospects coming up or what? It might be a little bit of a struggle, but oh. we always find things open for two <laughs> yeah. We figure it out. We, we get find it a way up more. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Go on, is that was all the other provincial champions? Yeah. Pro- almost provincial champions. We showed it out with the midgets and bandums. Yeah. <laughs> midgets. We should have got Parker on today. <laughs> he's in. He's in an IV camp. Oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I so saw he was in Prince George. Yeah, he thinks he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. Is there any other games you want to recap, or do you want to talk about this season a bit more, or do you want to hop in and play some games? I say talk about the West Band game first. Okay, may, I, may I add, you guys were underdogs at Provincials, right? Yes. Everybody started their back with goalies thinking that severe way. Under, <laughs> severe underdogs. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and they, <laughs> dog story. And they you know, away. That's, a, that's a tough one. When yeah. you look and they go, you go watch a team that goalies really good, and then they give you the backup. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's oh. what they think of us. Well, the team you guys beat in the final, didn't you lose them? Seven rips or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, everybody was nervous that game, and like, I don't know, we just didn't play it. Our power play wasn't clicking, our county kill sucked. Um, 
Hey, special teams wins. Ask the Kings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> you thirty on you know, catching strays. Yeah. All right. Sorry, West Bend. Okay, Fetching West Bend again. Um, <laughs> we uh. <laughs> so it was first. So most of the Vancouver teams like them, Hollyburn, and Picton, they only held like four D men. Which so our game plan. As soon as we like, as because my dad watched them, like <laughs> the day before, <laughs> our game plan is just like get, get to the red line, get it deep, and then their D man, like their captain, did not want to turn around the one time. He was like, oh, and then he was like slugging <laughs> back. He <laughs> went for a change, actually. <laughs> and, and, like he played the, yeah. and so the zero, it went. It was zero zero after the first, zero zero after the second, and then six minutes in. Chase scored. Hunter shot from like the hash marks on the left side. It went post, post on the goal line. Just came, Chase just came in and buried it. And then thirty seconds later, West Van scored. <laughs> oh wait, I just talked about the intermission in the second. So, okay. <laughs> but right, the thing, up. but the thing was, if um, if we tied that game, we wouldn't have went to the finals because because they um had what did they have? They had two, three, no, two wins, one loss, one tie, and we had, no, yeah, zero, zero, (laughs) zero losses, and we were two, er, were we two? Yeah, we were two, one, and one. So if they scored, so if they won or tied, they would have went and played Hollywood. So we, uh. And there was no semi, right? It just, no, it was top two teams just go. And so we played, so in the second intermission, G pulled us, told the six guys who were going off, like going on if something had to happen. It was me, Chaser, Kip. Shout out to the boys. Shout out to the boys. boys. They better watch this. If they don't watch this, they're not advertising this, we're going to have a problem. It was Bammer, uh, Levi, and Colton. And um, so he pulled us aside and he was like, this happens, we're going to have, because, like, we pulled the goalie with one and one one. <laughs> you got to get in. You gotta and, get in. And this then, is sports. This is peak shout out to And then, um, <laughs> where did it go? It went, oh, uh, how did it, we went. We pulled up on TV watching the game. Watch all the Facebook games. Oh, it went, so, um, okay, so right. we pulled him. We were, like, in the D zone, and he came. And the ref didn't know that we had the goalie. And then he counted. He was like, who the whistle? Too many men. <laughs> oh, then, amateur ref. And then, oh, um, oh. and then we went. So then Jeff, Jeff Shipton was being smart because our D-men were tired because they were out there for like a minute 30. And so he was yelling at G to like get him to come over here to give him a rest. And then he pulled all of us together and said, as like a mini time I was like, just get it up ice. Get go get one. And then my dad and then the ref went away and then you, my dad was like, I don't know. <laughs> and so we had like That's we had like a minute and thirty seconds of rest. And then um how did it go? Face off was in the center and somehow it went all the way to our corner. And then Colton Lowen just turned up, brought it down the wall. Me and Hunter went. We jammed it, like wrapped it, and Kipton came in, scored with nine point four seconds left. Whoa. And I looked back at her bench, and <laughs> it was crazy. Like everybody was like jumping super high. It was like amazing. And then, and apparently the West Band coach was shaking hands with eleven seconds left. Oh <laughs> baby, John. you can't do that. That's very Jaden wow. Weens of him. That's- <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Scoreboard, scoreboard, scoreboard. <laughs> but could you imagine being in Pee Wee and you just need to play for the tie at one one, and the other team pulls their goalie? Oh, I would not handle myself. <laughs> I'd be freaking out. Yeah. You just know all the boys were pumped. <laughs> could you imagine a G Dub empty netter? <laughs> <laughs> very, very Tortorella like oh, yeah. for how much he doesn't like torts. <laughs> yeah, thought that was pretty. He fun. did it first, trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right before the the caps made it into the play. 
What are we doing here? I just like throwing zingers at Dylan. That's just my favorite thing to do. You followed through on that yet? I'm working on it. I'm in between some things. <laughs> I'm in between some things. Waiting a little bit. But I think we should play. Let's play some games. I mean, hold on. Or do you want? Okay. I just want to make sure you've got everything out of the tank. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, you've had some. You've had some quality. <laughs> Did we bring? There, is there hold up? Go ahead, sir. We didn't bring the banner or the medals or not. Medal? I mean, our house is closed. We didn't grab it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we could. We'll get a picture. We maybe pop a picture up from the edit. Yeah, we'll yeah, get we'll some. Throw a we'll throw some stuff up in the edits. I might put some. It's all on Facebook, so we might put some highlights in the podcast. <laughs> you, get to ed- you get to edit, so you can tell us where this picture is going to be. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, right. pictures. Right about salt. Yeah, right here. <laughs> And I'm gonna throw some highlights of the game in. We'll see oh. if I kiss. It's on Facebook. Are we can't get, get copyrighted. copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the, the U13 FSG Flyers are coming for a name. Put yeah. the West Band goal in. Yeah. And uh, your your game tire. Yeah, and the game yeah, tire. Yeah, the tire you were very far and up. all the other goals from the boys. Yeah. And, and the the celebra- celebra- what about the celebration? And so yeah, the celebration. Fired up. Yeah. We're buckets throwing. Yep. Oh, oh, you did the whole nine. I think it's so nice. I threw my neck out because I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't have that sitting And there was, there, was a, there was a picture of the ref. He was like this to our bench, and my leg was already over because <laughs> um, Clayton, Clayton Bain made like this pop board thing. It was like the BC Championship logo, and it had like it was puck holders. So after every game, and I collected every puck, and so. You can just see in one of the videos, I go this way, come this way, grab the puck, and rip this <laughs> <laughs> into right? the pile. I heard you guys might be getting uh, getting rings for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think they're ordering some rings. They're going to look pretty sick. I saw some pictures nice. the other day. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's if we can find a picture of that again. Yeah. Right here. Right here. <laughs> this is going to be a whole slide. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of editing for me with all my not spare time. Yeah, you don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> But is there anything else you want to talk about before we hop into some games? Mm-hmm. I mean, we could ask him a couple of the questions. What's the cap? What's the... Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. so how are we playing on the course? Come <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, the course? I went out... What did I go out? I went out... It was... No. Monday. I went with Kipton, Carter... <laughs> Kipton, Carter, and Brinkston. We played, we played Scramble. Uh... Do you do four man scramble or two v two? Two v two, and scrambles. so uh, or no, it was well, best ball actually. Shows. It was best ball. Oh yeah. And um, Kipton's like insane. He shot like a seventy six on the white point. Wow. <laughs> in a tournament too, and um, so we it put on it. We, it was me and him. Yeah. It was me and him versus Brinkston and Carter, and but said Kipton is really good. We gave um, we gave uh, Carter and Brinks three strokes. So, like, they could, like, even it. And so, of course, they saved one for the ninth hole. And if we were even, we were even going to the ninth hole. It was, it was crazy. That's pretty competitive. That's awesome. <laughs> I had, like, a or 15 hit foot cut. Well, trained it. <laughs> nails. <laughs> 15. Oh. That's still tension. <laughs> longer than Caleb's longest putt. He's not <laughs> hitting any of them more than five. Oh. <laughs> It you, was, wanna, you wanna shout out any of the other boys? I mean, you've been throwing all the boys' names out there, but get everything off your chest. Shout out, yeah. shout out everybody. Everybody, like everybody on the team. Well, shout out everybody. I gotta shout out. We gotta shout out. Yeah. Well, we need to get shout out. Oh, no. Well, you think? <laughs> you think? We wanna <laughs> shout out all the Presbyte watchers. <laughs> <laughs> And our cousin Chasey, who I told her would get shouted out after yeah. the Presbyte people, because snapshot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Presbyte. <laughs> Shout out to Presbyte. Good spot. Yeah. Anyways, okay. sorry, Sal. So. We can move on. Yeah, appreciate that. You know what? I don't. I don't, I don't need do, to Syria. I don't need to Syria. It's all good. I'll do like <laughs> my line. Oh yeah. So, okay. Oh, Shout out. My power play. Shout out, Kipton. Kill. Shout out, Kipton Harvey. Scored two GWGs and two GWGs. <laughs> yes. yes. This guy's not. Uh, and he's a stick on the course too. <laughs> <laughs> what can this kid do? Brody. Brody Peterson. He was. He's wheeling. He's fast. Uh, <laughs> Levi. Cappy. He was good. Um, Golden Lowen. Press the two. Press the low ones out there. Uh, oh, 
Liam Shipton, Big Rick. <laughs> Big Rick. Yeah. Ooh, he's a dog. <laughs> and the uh, person who kept us in all tournament, uh, trading schemes. He was lights out all tournament. Oh boy. Perfect. Good shout-out. Shout-out to, shout to, shout to, shout to the boys. Shout-out to the boys. Anyways, that's pretty much going to wrap it up here. We don't know what this episode's going to look like, so hopefully someone explains that at the start of whatever this episode is. But are you going to remember? The- Cody Franzen. Thank you. Cody. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. I remember. Sorry. It was terrible. Sorry for comparing Colton Sissons to Cody Franzen. Yeah. Yeah. Egregious. But with that, we're going to send it back to ourselves wherever we are. That was U13 Provincial Champion Sullivan to care. My little cousin, he was really fired up to be on the pod, and we were pretty excited to have him and just be able to sit there and hang out and show out some of the boys, like the insane golfer that he was talking about. Dylan looks a little yeah. frozen, but I'm going to try and kick it over to him because that's kind of all we got today. Don't take it away. I think my iPad's glitching out pretty good here. You're Can back you, now. You got me? We're good? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, apparently that kid's a stick, so shout out that guy. I wish I was like him on the course, but I'm not. Um, yeah, we got some pretty cool, interesting news coming in the next week or so. Um, no details yet. Can't, can't spill the beans yet, but we got some cool stuff coming. Um, we're excited. Again, no sharesies, no sharesies here. No. But we got two things that I can think of, at least. I agree. I agree. We're on the same page here, but... We're excited to, to bring those to life here in, in the next coming weeks. Um, hopefully get some interviews lined up. The The hockey seasons are kind of kind of wrapping up here soon, so we're going to try and go full force on some interviews. But for now, me and Luke are wrapped up. We hope you enjoyed those two interviews. Luke, I'm excited to see the interview with Jesse. I haven't seen it yet, so this was all you, so I'm excited to see it. I hope you enjoyed Sully. Character, he's a good kid, so that was fun. But, yeah. Um, like previously stated, we're on it. Anything, anywhere you find your podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, wherever, wherever you find folks get get your podcasts. But uh, yeah, um, thank you, thank you for watching and or listening, and we will see you guys next week.